There is a popular perception that LGBTQ plus communities are a cultural threat to India. I question this belief. Is it the people who make the culture or the culture who makes the people? As someone who falls into the binary umbrella, it is tough, difficult and beyond imagination to even fathom the amount of struggles, challenges and stigmatization that the LGBTQ plus communities have to face. The revocation of colonial era section 377 of the Indian Penal Code modeled on English Bhagri Act by Supreme Court bears a testament that acknowledgement of LGBTQ plus communities wouldn't hamper the culture of India or its diversity. LGBTQ plus is a term used for defining people who are lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender. This group of people is also known as homosexuals. Around the world, gender equality is a well-known issue. Today, homosexuality and queer identities may be acceptable to more Indian youths than ever before. But within the boundaries of family, home and school, acceptance of their sexuality and freedom to openly express their gender choices still remain a constant struggle. Far away from gay pride parades, meetups and heated discussions on Twitter, families in rural India have their own ways of dealing with LGBTQ plus individuals. In some parts, Secret honor killings are planned so that the only way for a young gay man to survive is to run away in the cover of the night to some city with no money or social support. But is it really an important disease as some political leaders point out? <laughs> History has a different answer unlike many. The truth is that these communities or same-sex relationships isn't a novel concept. It dates back to the period of Mahabharata, Ramayana and Vedas. Same-sex relationships were prevalent then, until the East India Company brought up the Christian ideas of sin, conjugal love and straight or narrow. For instance, the Kritivas Ramayana details about two widows of King Dilipa who lived together in intense love or Sampriti. The sage then named his child Bhagirath since he was born from two Valvas. Another popular text, Kama Sutra, in 4th century AD, talks of pleasure in male male unions. Bhakti saints in medieval era would often effeminize themselves to please gods. Experts point out that it is true that such practices were not widely practiced, however, they were not looked down upon. To further corroborate this example, until the 1800s, some Indian poets like Rangin and Insha did wrote literary pieces on same-sex relationships, not to ignore. This was not written in a derided tone, but a tone similar on normal heterosexual relationships. Victorian authorities were gobsmacked at Indian literature's openness on issues of sexuality. <laughs> it is ironic how the Englishmen vehemently called out Indian civilization as uncivilized, while in reality, Indian civilization was way more progressive of its times. LGBTQ plus communities came to be regarded as against the order of nature only, and I repeat, only in the colonial era. The Victorian idea of homosexuality became deeply engraved in Indian cultural system which was met with disdain by upcoming generations and political groups. Thanks to the legal and social works that revived our rich history of queer tradition, this upscaled activism through mediums of cinema such as the fire movie, sports, for instance, the fine example of Duti Chand, etc., did resulted in decriminalizing homosexuality in India. Hence, it is incorrect to say that only heteronormative sexuality 
constitutes the Indian culture. However, things aren't on platter yet. Not even half of the Indian population acknowledges homosexuality as normal. We must remember that it's we who make the culture and not the culture that makes us. I am hopeful that our valiant endeavors should result in a desirable inclusive culture.